The way you consume and share news today, it is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why it's crucial to look at what's being discussed online from the hottest issues to trends for our daily social media minute. We're joined by Erica in the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Tuesday. Yeah, happy Tuesday. It's kind of hot. Yeah, uh, it's definitely getting more and more humid. Right? Yeah. And indoors are getting way too cool real fast. So be sure to have like smart layers because yeah. it's it's like the perfect condition to get sick. That's right. All right, let's get started. Um, I, it's There's a lot of concerning health trends. I, I don't even want to call it a trend because it just it looks like it's championed by the worst advice ever. But it's more concerning if those who are young, more vulnerable or susceptible. Yeah to these kinds of information are coming across such a trend. Water fasting is apparently the latest viral, quote unquote. Yeah. I don't want to call it a health trend. What is this? Um, Lose weight fast trend. That's right. Summer mm. is uh, here, it seems, as we've been talking about yeah. uh, in the opening. It's very humid. It's very hot, uh, especially in the middle of the day. Um, and a growing number of Korean female teenagers are jumping on this extreme water diet bandwagon. Uh, the water diet is basically what it sounds like. You you consume water and little else. Uh, water, a little sodium, uh, and food supplements is, is what they survive on for days on end. I'm... Hmm. Yep. All right. So this extreme diet has garnered a lot of attention on social media, especially after it was revealed that some high profile celebrities reportedly lost a lot of weight through this diet. I feel like those reports are questionable in the first place. Yep. And second of all, should you rely on that kind of guidance for, I don't know, a healthy body? Yeah. You know, as of Monday, more mm. than 1000 posts have been uploaded uh, on social media with the hashtag water fasting mm -hmm. on Instagram. YouTube also has a number of videos that feature um, people sharing their experiences of losing a whole bunch of weight through this water diet. And they also offer tips on how to hold back appetite. It's not a water diet. You're fasting. Yeah, you're, you're fasting. For days on end. Yep, that's right. Okay. Uh, numerous social media users have claimed to have been fasting for not days, but for weeks. And uh, they lost, they have claimed over 22 pounds or 10 kilograms uh, in those weeks. Now, according to a report by the National Health Insurance service last year, the number of female teenaged patients with anorexia has increased sevenfold over the course of four years from 2018 to 2022. So the number back in 2018 was 275 and that number rose to 1,874 over the course of four years. So what's really concerning is that adolescents are also turning to this extreme method to lose weight. Yep. Um, and uh, experts point out that these types of extreme Extreme diets can disrupt physical and cognitive development of adolescents mm -hmm. and may even cause various health problems like uh, dietary amenorrhea, which is the absence of menstruation, osteoporosis is another one, and a whole bunch of eating disorders. Now, doctors advise against teenagers uh, that base their diets on appearance rather than their health. <sighs> uh, intermittent fasting is very popular uh, these days. Uh, fasting for more than 16 hours should also be avoided. Mm -hmm. uh, experts agree that if teenagers subject themselves to such extreme diets, there can and will be dangerous consequences. I think we need to consistently, constantly yeah. put this message mm -hmm. out there. I remember because I, I grew up in dance classes. Mm -hmm. I was part of dance teams. I was part of a ballet company. Yep. And we had these regular health classes, right? Mm -hmm. And the idea was to instill a better sense of what is health and nutritious and anorexia and bulimia were the first topics we talked about. You know, I have a, f a very close friend whose daughter is now in high school and she's a ballerina. Mm -hmm. She's studying in Germany right now and I've seen her grow up over the years and I mean, she's very talented, right? Uh, but she's so thin. Mm -hmm. It's it's shocking just yeah. how thin she is. And my friend is worried. Um, but she also says she needs to be thin in to order be in to be industry. on the stage. But we can say right. the same about some of these select celebrities. In fact, mm. um, a few actresses and actors have come yeah. forward and said nothing that they perpetuate is natural. Mm. 
We grew up with airbrush models too, right? But does this day and age make it all too difficult to avoid magazines, for example, for us? It's social yeah. media today. I, I read a news article just a few days ago. It was actress Han Go Lin who yeah. shared her, uh, you know, her, her diet, diet regimen. Yeah, regimen. And she says when she was younger, she used to uh, go on for days without eating. Yeah. Like 30, 36 hours fasting was nothing for her when she was younger. But now she, she has a more difficult time, you know, feeling hunger. So she, she has sort of cut down that fasting to 24 hours, which I still think is kind of incredible. Yeah. I don't know. That cannot be healthy it, at it, all for your body. Can, and it's going to come get you, you know, when you're older. It takes a toll. Yeah. Your body is all about balance, right? Right. I, I think starving yourself for days on out just mm. water and little sodium and food supplements that, that leads to malnutrition. It, it's really not rocket science. No. It's obvious to us who pay attention mm -hmm. to nutrition. Uh, and nutrition deficiency, as you can imagine, cannot be solved with mineral water or... <laughs> A few pills. That's right. You know, the human body needs essential nutrients like protein mm. and fat. You know, some people note the prevalence of lookism in Korea has contributed to this phenomenon. It doesn't help. Yeah, no, it doesn't at all. An excessively thin female body has become the sort of like ideal image, especially uh, on social media. Teenagers with low self-esteem could be trying to sort of like satisfy their sense of achievement through attaining thin bodies. This is their only way to control themselves. Actually, that's a really good yeah. point. Um, and when you're younger, I think it's relatively mm. easier to shed those few pounds in days yep. as opposed to when you're in your 30s and 40s and 50s. Your body just works differently and it feels like you have easy control over what you look like. Correct. Um, and this is not just a trend here in Korea. I just read uh, that this is a trend. Extreme dieting is a trend in Japan as well. Like uh, these teenagers are just so thin. I so, wonder, so thin. how do we reach the teens? Mm. I think that's the bigger homework, right? Because yep. it's not just about putting the message out there. We have to reach those who right. are, you know, actually facing the pressure to go on these extreme mm. diets, right? Uh, telling them that they're beautiful, that doesn't always work. And you know what? Being super thin, I don't think that's attractive at all. Maybe we needed to change the narrative yep. a little bit. I agree. Yep. <laughs> all right, let's move on to our second uh, buzzword this morning. Singer turned artist Horby tackles cyberbullying through art. Mm -hmm. Now, she has faced several criticism for her art before is it <laughs> yeah. original is she really an artist but she's come a long way yeah um you know she she has definitely come a long way and i i've gained a sense of appreciation for her me too um and she, she grew on us yeah definitely <laughs> so she's now joining forces with five korean and chinese artists to highlight a social issue cyberbullying mm. through their artworks so from june 12th that's tomorrow to the 30th uh, so B is going to take part in the group exhibition Cyberbullying at Artnoid 178 in Seongbukgu, Seoul. Uh, the exhibition is going to address the pervasive issue of cyberbullying in our society. I feel like these two topics are really important yep. and timely. It affects mm -hmm. any of us, right? Uh, cyberbullying refers to the act of harassing, humiliating others anonymously, usually uh, hiding behind technology like internet, social media, mobile devices. Yep. It encompasses cyberverbal abuse online ostracism, cyber defamation, the list really does go on, yep. and celebrities are most exposed to it, if you think about yes. it. Uh, tell us about the other artists who will take part in this exhibition. Yeah, so the artists include Kim Girung, Kim chang uh, Idona, uh, Son chi and Xia Yan. Uh, the participating artists are going to be presenting media art and installation artworks uh, that offer each of their perspectives on cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. Now, Sorbi is a victim of cyberbullying herself. Okay. Um, I mean, she's a celebrity, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, you can imagine. So she's been speaking out about this social issue through her uh, Apple series. Okay. And for this exhibition, she created a piece titled Beyond the Apple, uh, which was inspired, she says, by this like one 
mocking comment she once received from somebody that asked if she was even capable of drawing an apple. Uh, the, f- the piece features uh, sort of like a melting apple relief mm. that turns into alphabet letters. I think that's kind of brilliant, taking the power away yeah. from the mockery, right? I agree. Um, she shared her thoughts on participating in this uh, latest exhibition, uh, and she said she's been working on pieces uh, about cyberbullying for a while, actually, not just for this particular exhibition. She said the exhibit is important because it allows the public to talk about the seriousness of cyberbullying uh, with people from all walks of life and move closer to finding ways to protect victims mm-hmm. in our society. Now, the exhibition also aims to improve social awareness, uh, promote positive online behavior, and support the creation of relevant laws through widespread public engagement and uh, touring exhibitions. I don't know. There's something empowering about an exhibition like this. Whether you appreciate her art or not, that's up to you, yeah. right? Because as a viewer, you as get to decide. As with any art. As with any yeah. art, you're right. Um, but I think she raises important set of questions around cyberbullying and the seriousness of it. I mean, sometimes we step aside that only a few years ago we lost a few celebrities mm-hmm. due to partially, I think, yes, cyberbullying. Yes, that's right. All right, so when does this exhibit open? Well, the the official opening event is going to start at 5 p.m. That's tomorrow um, at Artnoid 178. Uh, the exhibit is sponsored by the Seoul Gender Equality and Family Fund for 2024. And this exhibition is going to uh, open again in July and then go on until September. Okay, there you have yep. it. If you're in town, maybe it's something you should check out. You know what we need to do? Shift our narratives a little bit to empowerment. Yep, I think so. I mean, that's pretty healthy. On to our final story this morning. China to reveal beloved panda. Fubao to public on June 12th. I mean, there was... A lot of concerning, uh, yeah. unconfirmed stories yes. floating through cyberspace. Yeah, so uh, what? It's been how many? It's been more than two months since yeah. Fu Bao yeah. left for China. And uh, there's been news stories that have been kind of like coming out in recent uh, weeks saying that, alleging that Fu Bao uh, is not receiving proper treatment living under dire conditions yeah that's right and again like lena said unconfirmed uh you know uh, news reports but anyways uh fubao is finally going to meet the public (laughs) on june 12th that's tomorrow okay at the wolong shen Ping base in china after going through two months of quarantine uh the facility is going to be closed later today Mm -hmm. from noon to 5 p.m and from 9 a.m to noon tomorrow to ensure safety during um, her debut, let's call it. <laughs> Great debut. Yes, yeah, so Fubao has been adapting to the seasonal bamboo varieties <laughs> um, in China and uh, according to the base, she especially enjoys bitter bamboo stalks, leaves, and white bamboo stalks. Mm. Uh, she also enjoys apples and steamed corn buns mm. as uh, snacks, supplementary food. Mm. Uh, now, her debut is going to be broadcast live, starting at 9 30 a.m local time you know i was recently in chengdu i went to one of the panda bases oh my gosh there's there it's amazing yeah. you know seeing one panda is amazing if you see them like you know many in of groups? them yeah. what's, this, what's a good group of panda called is um, this something furry i'm gonna look it up as you yes answer let's our do final that <laughs> <laughs> anyway so it, you know it's it's I, i'm excited that she's going to be one of those pandas she's gonna have companions to play with and dine with and <laughs> sleep with. Nothing interesting is oh, coming really? up. Oh, yeah. really? Okay. Yeah. Anyway. Mm. A group of pandas is called an embarrassment? What? <laughs> that can't be right. That's according to USA Today. I'm going to do my own research. But yeah, yeah that's a few sources. What? Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> This is why I looked it up. It's really funny. I, I'm still trying to process that information. <laughs> All right. Um, but just, just to be sure, uh, China's National Panda Conservation Center says Fubao has received proper treatment. Yes. So they tried to dispel any of those rumors, mm. right? Yeah. And uh, the refutation comes days after there was an electronic billboard ad in New York Times Square uh, that was paid for by South Korean panda fans. Uh, and on the billboard, it was accusing China of treating Fubao poorly since her return to homeland. Oh, I got serious. 
as these yes, accusations. Yes, exactly. So responding to speculation that Fubao had lost fur on her back uh, due to abuse and injury, the Conservation Center uh, released a video on May 28th saying uh, pa- the panda had a patch of fur on her neck that was shorter than the surrounding fur, but mm. no pathogens had been found during tests. There were no abnormalities such as allergy scabs or th- thickening of the skin. Um, it said that, uh, you know, Fubao was likely displaying normal seasonal changes in fur because there was an absence of redness, swelling, fever, skin lesions, or even parasites. Okay. So she looks like she's doing fine, okay. uh, you know. And uh, some South Korean fans also speculated that a small dent had recently appeared on Fubao's forehead. Uh, and they said that that was evidence that researchers were extracting panda body fluids. Uh. But according to Chinese media, Media reports the conservation center said this was because Fubao always rests her head on a corner of the cage when she sleeps that causes this small indentation. All right, well, wait and see, because she makes her second debut to yep. the public on June 12th, yeah. so be on the lookout for it. Apparently, a group of pandas is likely called an embarrassment because most likely they're kind of clumsy. <laughs> kind of cute. That's a cute explanation. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it, too. <laughs> Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow, Erica. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.